So my question is as follows, based on your experience in Google X and your writings on AI, what do you think are the top three actionable things young founders should do given the AI driven future to ensure that uh, their businesses are both tech enabled and human centered? Amazing question, Maro. Thank you so much. So in, in my mind, the top three things for anyone, by the way, not just young professionals, not just entrepreneurs, are agility. So the world has changed from a typical chessboard. So in, in my times, when I grew up as a professional, it, the, the skill that really paid was to be able to imagine the future five years ahead and plan you know, the, your moves so that you can win in that world. This is over. That chessboard has been removed and we, it has been replaced with a squash court, literally, where you have to run and be in the middle of the court on your tiptoes, waiting for where the ball is going to be, you reach out to hit it and then go back to the center of the court and wait for the next ball a few seconds or in business time a few weeks later. Okay, This is how quick we need to be. And in my mind, I think that agility is not the character of those who have built long-term businesses. And so it's actually quite a differentiator for younger generations. You're very agile, you're very fast. Don't sit back. I, I myself spend four to six hours a day keeping up with what's happening. And I change my plans literally on a weekly basis. Uh, and, and I think that's a very new and very different skill to building something sustainable. The second skill I would say is, um, is is becoming smarter. One of the things that most people don't recognize about AI is that in this era of artificial intelligence, we've built something that I normally refer to as the era of augmented intelligence, okay? As I said, we, we, we sort of have built, you know how you can plug into a socket in the wall and get energy out of it, energy is you, as a utility? Now you can plug into an, an AI and get IQ, uh, literally as a utility, intelligence as a utility, uh, we've commoditized intelligence. And so you can borrow intelligence, but doing that doesn't happen in the way that people use AI today. You know, when people complain, oh, but my husband said this, or, you know, uh, tell me a little bit about the game yesterday, or write me, write an email for me, or correct my messages, that's a total waste of intelligence, okay? The way I use artificial intelligence is always a deep search, always a very deep question, very well thought through, and I use four of them at the same time. So I would ask one of them for a report on something that is deep. I would take it to the other and sell, tell it to find out what's missing with it. I tell it to, I take it to another and tell it to verify the, the numbers and the figures and the calculations. And with that, you know, as an author, I, I don't know if you know this, but for, for many authors who are nonfiction authors, you would read five lines in my book and you go like, ah, that's interesting. Those took me four weeks of work. I researched so deeply to get there. Now with AI, they take me four minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very interesting how much more intelligent we've become. And the third, I said it already, it's all about ethics. Every single one of us is raising Superman. And if we manage to uh, create an AI that's not only capable, but also ethical, then I think we're heading to an enormous utopia where everything is possible. So when you're building things, building things for the good of humanity, because now, uh, you know, you can build anything and, and everything can make money. Like we used to say in Google, we, call, we used to call it the toothbrush test, that the best thing you can build is a technology or a solution or an answer or a city that's, that makes the life of a billion people better. And if you can do that, then you'll be successful, but at the same time, you will have created something for humanity at large. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mom. Thank you for that thought-provoking and intelligent question. Can we have the next question, please? So my question is about that. We often talk about smart technologies shaping the cities of the future, but without smart te strategies, they m remain under underused or misapplied. And in your view, how can the business community help cities build that missing layer, connecting innovation, governance, and 
measurable outcomes so that technology truly serves people and not just uh, separate projects? Uh, great question. So I, I will answer it quickly, to be honest. I think it's all about agility and relevance. So one of the things that we do very well in the technology industry, at least the technologists that succeed, is that we respond to the user needs with what we normally call A-B tests, right? So if you may not know this, but for the entire 12 years uh, I spent at Google, uh, we would change Google search, the engine that you're using, six times a day. Literally, you know, no versioning every four months. You'd get a new version every six hours or so, or two hours. And, and the way we did it is we did different versions of the technology and tested it with the users. So as a city planner, for example, or as a, as a you know, a, um, uh, you know someone, an architect that's integrating technology, you can always take your environment and test very quickly now that these things are much easier to do uh, and to build and see how the response of, of the users are. Again, this city is an amazing example of that. You know, you can easily feel that once you're stuck in a traffic, uh, uh, you know, in traffic in a street for, you know, at 10 minutes extra, you can almost predict in immediately that something is going to happen within the next few months where a new bridge will rise or a new, uh, you know, roundabout will happen because they're sensing, they're aware of the changes and the user needs. And so I use user because I'm a techie, but, but the, the citizens needs and they adapt accordingly. So it's all about that ability to communicate. And now AI can give you quite a bit of that because it sees the whole city, it sees the, the, um, an enormous amount of data. And if you ask the right questions, you'll always be able to, to move very fast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can we have the final question from a young professional, please? Hi, Mo. So lovely to connect with you. My name is Zoe. So my question is, as a founder building a social enterprise, I'm driven by purpose and impact. What advice do you have for leaders who want to grow sustainably without losing sight of their values? Oh, that's an amazing question. An amazing ending question as well. Uh, so so I, I joined Google in 2007 and for the first time ever, even though I spent my life before being an author in business, for the first time ever, I felt empowered to do good. Okay. And the reason for that is that we had, as I had mentioned very quickly, what we normally refer to as the toothbrush test. Okay. I'll give you a very open example. When I came to, to Google, I went to our leadership six weeks in and I said, you see, you're running the Middle East strong. I, I can find a way to triple the revenue, okay? Uh, all I need is $5 million investments. I'll build a different sales infrastructure and it will be fine, okay? And believe it or not, at the time it was Larry, Sergey, our co-founders, and Eric Schmidt was our CEO. They looked at me strange. I swear, they were like, um, but you haven't earned that revenue, Mo. I was like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you I'll triple the revenue. And they said, you haven't earned it, right? For you to earn your revenue, you need to make a difference to the people. You need to fix the product. You need Google to understand Arabic really well. You need to build the internet infrastructure. You need to build the commerce infrastructure. And when you've done that, the revenue will follow, okay? Instead of asking us for $5 million, we're going to give you $50 million that we expect you to to put in the market, to grow this market, to serve the users well. And when you do the revenue will be no problem. At the time I was leaving uh, Google to Google X, the revenue was a hundred X, okay? Uh, literally the first three years, there was no growth whatsoever, but we invested in building something that was good for humans. Okay. And so people used it. And so accordingly, the business followed. Call it the, the toothbrush test. And the toothbrush test is very straightforward. If you want to make a lot of money, Harvard Business Review will tell you, build a plan, find where the money is, create a product. It doesn't matter how good it is, convince people that they need it and you'll make money. I will tell you, find the problem that's, that, that uh, uh, you know, a billion people or a million people are struggling with, solve it really, 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 really well, and you won't be able to count the money. 
So at the same time where you're changing people's lives, because you're serving them, your business will succeed. And that's truly, truly your answer.